Alright. Hi. So, good day. I'm Ben Marvolus. So, you can call me Marvelous, right? Di ba? Mas okay. So, ang topic natin for today, it's about EDCOM of 1991. So, ano nga ba ang EDCOM 1991? Yan ang alam nyo natin mamaya. So, sabi nga nila, di ba, ang pag-asa ng ating magandang kinabukasan ay ang magandang edukasyon. Tapos, sabi pa nila, ang edukasyon ang tanging pamana na hindi mananakaw ni naman. Diba? So, paano natin mapanghahawakan yun? Kailangan natin munang talakayin kung ano ang EDCOM of 1991 para mapabuti natin ang education system ng Pilipinas. So, we will tackle 10 findings ng EDCOM of 1991. Are you ready? EDCOM of 1991 or also known as Congressional Commission on Education to Review and Assess Philippine Education. It is a joint resolution on the Philippine 8th Congress headed by late Edgardo Angara. So here's our findings for the EDCOM of 1991. Number 10, we have too little investment. In EDCOM of 1991, it says that 1.3% of the GDP were allocated for the education paired with the another ASEAN countries. But because nowadays we are in the ASEAN integration, the Department of Budget and Management allocated 17 billion in 2018 and this 2019 they allocated or they propose an allocation of worth 27 billion billion for the education but still why it's, it's not enough maybe because uh, of the inflation rate in our country uh, we have a lot of population compare 10 years way back or because of our location of our countries located uh, around the seas and we are prone in uh, typhoon and most of the classrooms and learning facilities were devastated and can't utilize it anymore and maybe overstaying uh, they says that only one year were funded for each student to overstay to finish the study but sometimes it's more than five years it took more than five years before they left the school. So, number nine, we have the dropout rate. It is the dropout rate be between uh, rural area versus the urban area. It says that nowadays it has more dropout rate in the rural areas or the undeveloped areas of our country rather than in the urban areas mainly because of the poverty they can't afford to go to school because they choose to help their parents or their family to go to work first rather than to go to school and also maybe because of shortage uh, of facilities or rooms and teachers so they felt they're not prioritized so why they go to school anymore so because of that uh, they not go to school anymore number eight we have the special needs neglected uh, we have students that have special needs but then are they addressed with their issues so in the classroom setups in millennial era they have uh, one to three students in a classroom where they can study together with the other regular students so it's a good platform to promote harmonious relationship between the other students so I think the government should focus to address this issue so they can promote diversity Number seven, bilingual education affects learning. Yes, indeed. So there are some schools choose two technique or approach with this math. With these findings, the other choose the immersion or it is the abandonment of their native language 
and choose English as a medium of instruction while the other schools or most of the schools like uh, public schools the government implemented it uh, to use the mother tongue or what they call the transitional they use the native language in order to teach their students uh, on the early age and then sooner or later they will use the English and then the Tagalog medium in their uh, teaching. Number six, we have the manpower mismatch. So most of the teacher nowadays this is their struggle, their problem in their schools because they are enforced to take uh, or to teach beyond their capacity. So it's giving a hard time for them to to take another load in order to teach the other students but it also a opportunity for the teachers to grow more and more with their craft because they are able to study about the subject matters of what is given to them and though nowadays we have a lot of demand or high demand in teachers uh, it's still a main problem in our country because the main reason is because the low salary of the teachers. Number five, we have the graduate studies development. Uh, way back, uh, only those who are uh, rich or financially stable are able to go to school to pursue their master or their doctorate in their uh, undergrad uh, course. But nowadays, because of the ASEAN integration, the teachers were obliged to, to take their masters or to attend seminars and different trainings in order to equip their self to in more knowledge and able to teach the, their children or the students effectively and efficiently. Number four, we have the inadequate science and technology. They says that we have a lot of fun for education. Why they are still they are still locked uh, in the facilities? Why they can't provide the materials they need? So like a science laboratory, the computers. So the students nowadays are very interactive. They can't settle only in academe or through oral they have to do it by their own they experiment they do it to more on hand so they can discover more of it so the government should prioritize this also because uh, they have to focus not only on the, the on the co or cognitive side of the student but also on their skills on the psychomotor number three we have the schooling plank and class interruptions is equals to less quality yes indeed but uh, from 200 days of schools to not more than 220 it's still enough the problem is because we are prone to typhoon there's a lot of uh, classes cancellation they can still uh, proceed to their topics through giving a remedial or makeup class, uh, do it do it eat by their own in their homes or they, in their houses. So, yun na yun na yun. Number two, the low achievement. It is related with the number three and four, the so school length and class interruptions and inadequate science and technology. They says that nowadays uh, we are in a student-centered learning approach. So, there's no more reason to have a student left behind. It says that 55% or less than of the learnings they acquired. So, why they can let them explore, uh, give them the opportunity to discover it by their own. So, by providing what they need and also by being a creative, not only for the, for the teachers but also for the students. Number one. Last but not the least, of course, we have the inefficient organization structure. So, based on Batas Pambansa 232, uh, we have the provision or the structure of the organization. 
uh, it says there that uh, we have the Minister of Education and the Services, we have the Board on Higher Education, we have also the Bureau of Primary Education and Secondary Education, Continuing Education, and also with the Technical and Vocational Education. So we have a good structure, but then it's not enough. So I think we have to restructure it so we can have a better education system. So that's my top 10 findings of EdCom of 1991. So my recommendations, I think eh, it's just like uh, giving the chance to the government to do their job because the K-12 education, I think there's nothing wrong about it. We are not used to it. That's why we are complaining and complaining and complaining. Why we do our part. So the K-12 is not on its full bloom. Uh, we have to give a try. It's just, we are on a trial and error uh, period. So sooner or later, nowadays we can see the lapses. The so sooner or later we can see the effect, the long term or yeah, the long term effect in our education. Everyone, everyone, each of every one of us will benefit on this program. So. Parents, students, teachers, every single, we need to cooperate. We have to help ourselves for a better nation. So, uh, the government should do something about it because uh, everything starts with the management. Then the rest will follow. So, if there's something wrong with the management, it starts from the internal and then the rest is history. So, everything will be fine and will be good. Bye. <laughs> Thank you.